Venom Edition 5 is out. Um, it's been a couple weeks, maybe three weeks since the last uh, issue. I'm, I'm getting spoiled with all these amazing Spider-Man ones that drop every week that have a Beyond one in between. I'm not used to going back to once a month uh, issues. Um, this one starts out um, kind of to fill the blanks of how the first issue ended when Eddie Brock dies but comes back. Comes back. Um, this is a more in-depth story of uh, Meridius. Um, it starts with him and his attack dog, Bedlam. Um, but yeah, we, we get a backstory to Meridius and his garden and the what seems like a symbiote pool where Eddie Brock was revived. Um, but we kind of find out that Eddie really wasn't revived into his body. It was just symbiote. It was, you know, he could be attacked, he could be ripped apart. And he is now officially Venom. He is one with the symbiote. Um, as this issue progresses, uh, Meridius and Eddie kind of somewhat get to know each other. Um, but, you know, the full time Eddie is kind of hesitant to, I guess, believe or come to terms with what this area is that he has been revived into um when eddie first comes out of the symbiote water he tries to talk he's struggling and uh meridia says don't try to talk you you just reconstructed yourself from the available matter available matter meaning what eddie isn't quite sure if you know is this my full body is this what what am i um so he takes a little stroll with Meridius in this garden that Meridius has built because Eddie says, so what do you call this place again? Meridius says, the garden of time after Ballard. And behind us is the rushing river of eons that brought you here to return home. You must learn to swim in it. And Eddie says, it's not that simple. My real body's gone. It burned. I died. And Eddie comes to terms with what's around him, and he's like, this looks like goo. This looks like plastic. Is everything a symbiote? Um, so as that goes on, they take a walk, and they, walk, they meet up with uh, another symbiote named Wild. And I can't find the other name, but these two symbiotes who seem to bow down to Meridius as king. But... Meridius mentions that the, uh, these other two symbiotes in their time, in their era, or wherever they came from, were also kings, just like Eddie Brock was the king of the symbiotes. Um, so Meridius kind of talks to these other two. They try to talk back. Meridius lashes out and says, don't ever speak out to me. Um, and from there, we meet the, uh, the pet. Seems like a pet. But it's really not a pet. It's uh, it looks like Carnage, in my opinion. What they did with Bedlam, he he looks like Carnage, but he's not. He's like a buff red Venom, essentially. So Bedlam attacks one of the other ones. Eddie Brock steps in to try to help him, and as Eddie gets the guy out of the other symbiote out of it, um, he the, that symbiote starts screaming to Bedlam to kill Eddie. And Eddie's kind of thrown off. And, and during that time, uh, Meridius goes, look at those cavemen go. And the other symbiote goes, why don't you just stop it? We can't all be as enlightened as you, Meridius. How come it's not you breaking this nonsense up? And Meridius says, why should I? We're kings in black, minds in without bodies, and a garden of bodies without minds. Let the goose splatter. If that's how Bedlam wants to ease his tensions, it won't hurt anyone. And the other symbiote says, sure, that's practical, or maybe, or maybe you don't even want to try in case Eddie finds out the truth, that you're trapped as trapped as we are in, in a cage all your own. So, as we've seen in the other issues, Meridius is gone, or Meridian, Meridius, Meridian, it's Meridius, I keep saying Meridian, I don't know why, maybe because of the Forza, or Forza, see, I already messed it up, Horizon Zero Dawn, Forbidden West game coming out, um, but we've seen Meridius go in and out of places we've seen him meet with people in where they were studying dylan brock yada, yada yada he seems to be able to get out of this but the hint is that he's stuck here too 
because he also doesn't have a body. Um, so the fighting goes on with Bedlam. It eventually stops. Um, and then Meridius says something's come up and he has to go. But before he goes, one of the other symbiotes that was fighting with Bedlam originally says, Meridius, before you, before you uh, leave, there's something I, I meant to say to you, something I forgot. And, oh, his name is Tyro. And Meridius goes, do you know what I forgot, Tyro? How pathetic you are. Stop crawling after me and do as you're told, you ridiculous child. I have places to be. And Tyro is like the former king of symbiotes in his time, but is still like, just bows down to Meridius. So Meridius goes into his own world and says, children, they're all such children to me, the other kings, Eddie Brock most of all. And wild forever, leaving his bitter barbs under the symbiote skin. He should be fully broken, but he's still capable of causing problems, if only with words. Still, he's merely an irritation. Tyro, his wielding need, his desperate bootlicking is a source of rage. What was he trying to remember? I should have listened, I suppose, but I can't go back. So from there, we get answers on how Meridius' story originated. And if you remember in the uh edition one of this venom venom was searching an empty ship and there was a black symbiote that was taken over and venom wasn't sure how or why it was taken over that was meridius meridius is like all in everything and the, the comic continues to show how meridius was the eddie brock that was in the house with dylan telling dylan they needed to go before dylan called his real dad and the plan was to get him to meet at the motel and Meridius planned all of this. He is like uh, Emperor Palpatine, essentially, in this comic. That is my best like comparison of what we find out what Meridius has been doing. Everything he's done, he's done with a purpose. Um, so after Dylan talks to his real dad, Meridius figures it out. And, and this is the line, that, to me, what is the Emperor Palpatine line? And he says... And off the rabbit run, set on his course exactly as I intended, meaning Dylan, who ran out of his room when he called his real dad, or called his dad. Even when things don't go quite, quite, wait. Even when things don't quite go as I plan, they go as I plan. Of course they do. But it mustn't get too confident. In the end, all Eddie really is to me is another playing piece. The true game against my true opponent has only just begun. But I have made the first move. Dylan Brock bonds with the symbiote. That's established. That is unlaterable. So now the symbiote will begin its own journey to the place where I'm waiting. When it arrives, I will greet it. And I will shed the name Meridius as I have so before it. For on that day, we will be Venom. Meridius' end goal, because Eddie Brock is king of the symbiotes, is to get Venom. But he was able to kill Eddie Brock, or Eddie Brock was killed by that in the motel and was sent to this garden. We still don't know why people keep getting sent to this garden. Is it by plan by Meridius, or is this where symbiotes go when they die? We're not sure. But we now know that Meridius has set all of this up in motion because he wants Venom. He wants to kill Dylan and get the suit. But since it wasn't on Eddie when Eddie died, he couldn't get it. But somehow he's stuck here. That, that's the other part that hasn't been clarified. That, he, that is he really as stuck as the other symbiotes? And why are the other two symbiotes there with Eddie? Or three, including Bedlam. But I think he created Bedlam. If I go back in another issue, I think he created Bedlam. So the biggest question is, does Meridius need the true symbiote Venom, which is bonded with Dylan, to get fully out of wherever this garden is? Because they already referenced that he's as stuck there as everybody else. So I'm curious to see what, um, what happens, how Dylan ends up here in this garden. Because we've already seen that Eddie has reached out to Dylan from the garden. They've communicated, da 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 um, But there was no mention of Dylan outside of that flashback in this one. So we'll have to see how that results, how, how it goes. I, I'm honestly not sure what's going to happen there. Um, this was a good issue. This, this was a needed issue to understand Meridius and understand 
that ending of the first issue when Eddie was in the gar in the garden. It was either the excuse me, it was either the first or the second. So I I was very like up in air about this. Um I still kind of a, kind of am because I know from future how these end. Um Eddie is going to save the day. Eddie will become will remain the king of the symbiotes. I, I just can't see them keep making Dylan the king. Dylan doesn't want this. Dylan doesn't. Dylan just doesn't want to be the king of the symbiote. But he had no choice. And you know it's it's weird. I I just I it's like the ending has been so predictable. But I'm hoping I'm wrong. I'm hoping I'm so wrong in that Dylan saves the day and maybe they kill off Eddie Brock. I don't know. Maybe this is the series they do because they're bringing back Lethal Protector. They're like rebooting Lethal Protector next month. But I don't know. Let me know how you guys like this. Let me know how you guys feel about where this is going. I really enjoyed this issue because it was a lot of backstory, but it def definitely felt Emperor Palpatine-ish in the new Star Wars for Meridius. So um, stay tuned for, for the next one next month. There will be a Lethal Protector that comes out next month as well. I think that's a reboot, but it's the original artist and I think writer of the, uh, of the OG Lethal Protector in the 80s or 90s. Um, so stay tuned for this. Stay tuned for my next uh, Amazing Spider-Man one because their they're issue 89 or 88 came out as well today. But uh, yeah, let me know how you guys felt about this one. I liked it a lot though. So I'll talk to you guys later.